Good afternoon. So, busy morning. Uh, I got some more bags made. That uh, seems to be getting busier and busier earlier and earlier and it's right because of the hay shortage and the lack there of grazing areas and pasture for these animals so people are supplementing with hay and grain sooner than they were last year so instead of getting the rush order or the, the orders end of august september october and throughout the winter now we're getting them july august september so about a month ahead of last year uh, and uh, so what I'm gonna run out now and do a little bit of field checking I didn't I checked the fields what I think before we left I did a video uh, that's kind of one of the reasons we went on our trip the the route we went is because I wanted to see just how dry it was across the prairies we covered about 3400 kilometers and uh, yeah we seen some dry some good some you know whatever so I want to head back out now I'm gonna check our our fields and see and one thing I'm doing that we've never done or really cared about before, I'm actually taking a measuring tape and I'm going to measure how tall they are uh, because we've got some straw committed to some people and uh, in a normal year where the straw or where the crop grows, you know, as tall as, you know, up to your waist or up to your shoulders, straw is not an issue. However, a year like this, straw may become just as scarce as hay. So. I'm gonna go out there, and just check. It gives you a little bit of an idea about, you know, what 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 a guy can think he'll get. So let's uh, let's head out and uh, and see just how tall the stuff is. All right, so here we are at our furthest west field. This is the last field we seeded. Uh, was like May 16th, so it was plenty early. However. It missed a lot of the rain that we got right at home. So where we farm actually, so on the other side of those trees, there is basically no grain farms further than that. There's, that's all pasture on the hill and everything like that. That's all cattle country. The cowboys out there, they sometimes they'll seed, you know, a few acres of oats or whatever, 100, 300, 300 acres, you know, it's basically the big farms out there if they have 300 acres of crop so and uh, yeah it's just it's 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 tougher out this way than it is say to the east of us uh the weather's a little bit different we get snow a week earlier than, than they do 15 miles east it's uh it's just different and unfortunately this area here missed all of the rain that we even got in the yard which is about four miles to the west or to the east sorry however i just grabbed a pea and uh there's uh, two, four, six. So there's six peas in this pod and it, it's actually quite big. Uh, so I, I, it doesn't look like much and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try, to, try to talk it up. It's not good. Uh, this is canola. This is a weed. And uh, when you look out there into that yellow, uh, that's, all, that's all weeds. There's very little canola in there. So the canola didn't come, I guess it was just too dry, which is kind of weird because it came so well everywhere else but my dad knew it. He's been out here a lot more than I have. And he said, no, it just, it didn't get the rain. So, however, there is, uh, for as crappy as the peas look, there's actually quite a few pods on them and uh, there's quite a few plants. So it's gonna be tough, but we'll put lifters on the swather and we'll come out and we'll swath this so we don't pick up stones, eh? That's the biggest problem with low lying crops or crops that fall over. Uh, or crops that don't grow that tall is it just becomes a harvestability thing uh, you don't want to be driving your combine down the down the field you know chug 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 and then smash into this rock in fact now that i moved that one i'll take that off the field that's one of one of 10 million rocks on this field that won't won't end up inside the combine on my watch okay so this is our furthest west barley crop and it's just a mile north of that pea field we were just at uh this field last year was peas and canola we seeded it on the 5th of June. We seeded it into, basically into mud. We had the diff locks locked up on the four-wheel drive tractors just to pull the drills through. It was stupid. We shouldn't have done it. But when you're sitting there with that huge investment in machinery and you already have the seed and everything else, and you think, you know, it kind of was a Hail Mary. We knew that and didn't work out for us. <clears throat> we combined this whole half section, mile long. We got 50 tons of peas off of it. It was a saving grace because that was about as much seed as we needed to reseed again this year. So it wasn't the end of the world, but it wasn't very good either. However, 
because the crop didn't take anything out of the soil, this barley is doing quite a bit better than our other barley that we seeded onto canola stubble from the, and uh, that canola crop last year was pretty good. So I am out here trying to just assess how, how tall this is gonna be. And uh, th then I'll know a, a little bit better idea of how much bales they'll get, how many bales they'll get. So the barley out here is, you know, it's, it's basically 20, 21 inches tall, which isn't great, but it'll be easy to combine or easier. I've heard of people telling me that the canola or their barley isn't even up to their ankles. So there's nothing we can complain about here. I doubt it's going to grow very much more. Uh, as you can see, some of the heads are starting to lean over, which means they're getting heavy because they're filling. That's a really good sign. Uh, when you look out on the barley field and it looks fuzzy, that's uh, if it stays that way right up till we start combining, you may as well just go get the disc. It'll be worthless. If it's all tipped over and it looks shiny, then uh, that means all the heads are filled, they're heavy, and they've tipped over. And then uh, that's kind of when a guy can know to fire up the combine. What I'm going to do now, though, is run down to the north end of this because down there uh the river well creek runs through there and it floods in every year so that down there is basically just river silt and it's really really good land so if the barley's 21 inches up here i just i'm curious to know what it is down there so i'm here at the north <laughs> north end uh yeah it looks quite a bit different it's it's thicker and and you know just just better uh, and it always is. If we're going to have lodge crops, we'll always have it down here. So the heads looks bigger and plumper and <clears throat> and everything else like that. Is it any taller though? Well, that's a good question. I don't think it's going to be a whole bunch taller. It's, uh, no, it's about the same. 22, 23, 24 inches tall. Of course, well, here should be a fairly good spot to gauge, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, they say, what do they say, right? It's going to, once it starts to head out, it'll double in size. Uh, lots of this stuff, like you can see this guy, right? He's just coming out. So I don't know, is he going to double in height? I highly doubt it. This is a wheat. I don't know how he got in there. Uh, I, I don't think this stuff's getting any taller. See, so this guy's quite a ways out of, out of his house, you know, this one's just coming out. Uh, I, I think there's enough moisture because it isn't, uh, you know, it isn't really light. It's, uh, like that's quite, that's quite damp. So it's not, uh, it's not late by any means. So this, it, it could do a little growing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it will. I don't actually even think it will, but it's possible. It could grow another three or four inches, which like I say, uh, from a combining and in just a strictly grain side, it really doesn't matter. In fact, a lot of farmers, you can buy dwarf varieties of cereals that actually make less straw because then you don't have so much to thrash so from a grain growing side it's actually better when it's a little shorter it's just uh for the guys that want to bale it so but all in all this looks pretty good i think i mean there's that's a pretty big head of barley it's starting to fill actually what's what's on that one i fear my phone's gonna die but we count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 26. That's pretty good. And uh, I know there's a big fear out there. That's part of... Because when I drove around on our holiday, I, I, I thought the crops looked not too bad. But the big fear is that their crops have headed out and there is no moisture and there's no moisture in the forecast. So the heads won't fill. Whereas ours are already starting to turn. That's why they're as I said up there, that's that's why they're starting to, to lay over because they're getting heavy. Uh, the weird thing, you know, all these ones that are just barely coming out, they're, uh, who knows? It's a little uneven, I guess, but it will be what it will be. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm here at our wheat. So this is about 400 acres, and then there's another 70 here. And uh, <clears throat> it's it's no doubt the best that we did so far this year crop wise and uh, i said in my first video my first crop tour video it just felt it just felt like it was going to work uh the machine was working uh we had the right you know the fertilizer applicator that we worked the land with first was working good the you know the moisture was perfect it just and and it, it kind of shows i mean 
it's really even and uh you know even right here on the edge where you know usually it, you got to walk out a little ways it's uh it's gonna be what it's gonna be 27 27 inches tall and i bet you when you walk out there you know it's it's gonna be taller the one thing i don't know about this parade i missed a spot here that wasn't very good but I had one plugged run and one plugged run with 12 inch spacing Oof. you don't want to go too far but fortunately for me it was only the outside round so oh uh, what am i looking for here maybe it's not doing it over here the parada wheat and i did it to us last year and we didn't know why it like just kind of fell over on its own just like odd i'll walk way out here hopefully my phone doesn't die uh This bottom end of this field, when we, right after we seeded it within that week, we got a big, big rain. So it's a steady uphill all the way there. So down here in this knoll, they usually that knoll is completely dead. It's just the water always lays there. And then the water lays down here too. So it is definitely thinner down here. Uh, but once you get out here, it's, it's, it's gonna be much, much taller and much better. So out here, the wheat is 30. 29 inches tall. This wheat I don't think is growing to grow anymore, but whatever, 29, 30 inches tall is, that's that's pretty good. I mean, nobody can complain about that. It ain't shoulder height, but it's good enough and they'll get some bales off of it. It also uh, has decently sized heads, but uh, one thing that I was looking for, like I said, the just the odd one, they just fall over and that doesn't make sense to me. Why would they do that? Uh, I think something walked through there well maybe it's not oh yeah it, it kind of is doing it you can when you look down the row you can kind of see that some of them some of them just fall over and it's kind of dumb but whatever so anyways the wheat crop looks good oh that's where i drove with the sprayer that's what that was uh it's gonna be uh as long as it doesn't freeze and it's been getting cold it was like four or five degrees this morning so and we have had the august frost which you know if you get that, it just turns all this into nothing. You end up with tiny, tiny little heads or tiny, tiny little seeds that are, <clears throat> yeah, you, you can't give that stuff away. In the 14 days, they don't have frost, but uh, you never know. You never know. They're calling for lows of 10 and 12 and we're getting lows of, you know, four and six. So scary, scary. So I'm just heading over now to our split field that's half canola, half oats. That'll be the last one I stop at. I just want to see how tall the oats are. Because the guys who are interested in baling, they basically want the cereals. They want the wheat, the oats, and the barley straw. So I just see see how tall all the cereals are and then kind of know if a guy, if you know, if it's going to be just not enough bales and one person's going to take them all or if there'll be enough for two or three people. So I'm in the oats here and yeah, actually, unfortunately, this is my fault. I made a fairly large boo-boo here. I shouldn't have seeded oats here because there was a bit of wild oat pressure and we knew that but uh, I didn't think I didn't I stopped seeding the canola right there and I thought I thought I was far enough into it and I wasn't so uh, they, they call this stuff these ones are wild oats um, the oats are down in here just starting to head out so I guess uh, it'll make it'll make for roughage well if they, if they go ahead and bail it but uh, I want to get out here, find a spot where there's maybe less wild oats and try to measure. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's quite, a, that's quite bad. Anyways, lesson learned. So uh, oats are, yeah, oats are two feet tall. So that's pretty good too. Oats usually grow pretty pretty good in our, in our neck of the woods. We can grow pretty good oats, pretty heavy oats. I think there's going to be lots of oats on there. They're starting to fill. Uh, I expect there's lots of moisture. Or, or enough, I mean, probably not lots, but. Uh. <clears throat> so, it might, it might not be that bad either. I mean, you can see that it might not be that bad for wild oats. But they're definitely, uh, yeah, they're tall. They're, this is the tallest crop I've been in. So, could, could, be, could be a good year for these oats. The canola too. I'm not even sure. Our canola just looks really good. Like... There's lots of pods on it. 
I left this spot and see this is what happens if you have a plugged run or whatever there's no competition so like just everything grows I uh it's crazy but the canola I've been seeing lots of canola unfortunately it looks like you can walk through it you know uh, from the road it looks really thin and this is just a this is just a mat uh some definitely some weak little pods that still got some filling to do of course there's still flowers on it so it is still filling as long as it gets moisture uh pods down at the bottom they're uh you know there's some pretty pretty decent sized pods on there and uh <clears throat> it's it's nice and even this was the first canola sea field we seeded. So I seeded this one, then I went north of town. Then I come over, I seeded across the road here, and then I seeded on the other side of the trees. And all the, uh, lot, lots of fields around us, I know when they were seeding because I watched them, right? So some were after us and some were around the same time as us. Uh, I don't even know what did it. Uh, it's just, it, 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 probably variety, I guess, but this canola flowered longer. Uh, there's still flowers on it. Some of the stuff that was seeded maybe a week after this on the neighbor's place, there's already no flowers on it at all. So when they are talking about the drought and stuff like that, uh, it's important to realize not everybody was affected the same way. Uh, you know, I was out west. I showed you my peas and canola. That was a, that was, that's a disaster. That, this canola, however, I think this will be... If we don't get a frost or we don't get any any other disastrous impediment i think it'll be i think it'll be pretty good i'm gonna grab a plant here i don't know why it, it's 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 leaning right it's leaning our, our the canola our aries does lean because of the wind and stuff but it seems to really be it seems to really be leaning to the uh to the east so also it's pretty much irrelevant how tall the canola is but uh because people don't usually bail it some people have but this canola is 40 inches tall and uh you know still got the odd flower on it uh, top pods are very, but they fell last. So down at the bottom, I mean, the pods are fairly long and, uh, I think, I think we'll be okay. We're, uh, and as I said before, we kind of at the end of where people farm. So we're not used to getting the, those huge, huge yields that you read about in the paper anyways. I mean, we've never gotten that. So, Okay, yeah, I had to stop here. I just drove up. Our, we have a, that, that's our wheat field right there too. I just wanted to check that. It's about the same as the rest of the wheat. But yeah, this is what this is what the old field was supposed to look like. So uh, if I wasn't such a bonehead when I was seeding, I would have stopped and properly, or I would have carried on seeding the canola until I got through the wild oat spot. But here looks really good, and uh, it is. Yeah, it's two. It's over two feet tall here. So. They'll make bales on this one for sure, whoever whoever needs the oat straw. And the oats, uh, I don't know. I'm not, we're not real huge oat growers. I, uh, dad actually didn't grow them most of my young life. It was only once I started <coughs> custom hauling grain and talking to other farmers and seeing where the market was because I was hauling to some of these feed mills and stuff. And I was like, well, geez, we should grow oats. And then we started uh fortunately you know when we got into it the oat price had come around and uh you know we, we did fairly well my dad said when he grew oats oats was like you know under a buck a bushel and when now oats are like 390 so 